we're going to continue working on um, our matrices, but sometimes a couple of weird things will happen. And we've seen this before um, when we were solving our systems, and they gave us these inconsistent and dependent systems. That is, inconsistent, there was no solution to that system, and dependent, we had that there were going to be infinite solutions. So when we were solving those systems, remember that the infinite solutions happened when we ended with a true statement like 5 equals 5 or 0 equals 0. And we had no solutions. We had something like 0 equals 5 or 7 equals 2, something that just was not true. So let's see how that works itself up in a matrix. So it's starting with um, a matrix already that's augmented. So we're going to write the system just so we can kind of go back and forth between these things. x minus 3y minus 17z equals negative 59. And x minus 2y minus 12z equals negative 41. And the last one we have uh, 0x, so it'll just be negative 2y minus 10z equals 20. And that's fine. If you want to put a 0 in for a placeholder for the x, that's fine. Or you can just leave it out. It doesn't matter. So now we're going to look at doing some row operations. So let's see what happened from here to here. It looks like we already have a zero in that first column, yay. We have a one in that first column. So it looks like they're getting rid of that one. So remember to make a one go away, we're going to have to put two rows together. And the first column has that nice one there. So a one can be canceled out with a negative one. So we're going to do negative one times row one, add that to row two, to make my new row two. And so that's gonna look like, I'm gonna show my work off here, negative one row one would be negative one, three, 17, 59. We're gonna add one, negative two, negative 12, negative 41 to that. So we're gonna get zero, one, five, and two. And we'll get 18. So this first row then, our second row is gonna be zero, one, 5, 18. And again, the first row stays exactly the same as what we started with. We just used it. It does not change. Our third row does not change either. All right, so then what's happening next? It looks like we um, already have our first column how we want it. We have our middle one. So then we need to make that negative two turn into a zero. So I'm gonna use the one that's right above it and say, okay, well, to make negative two cancel, we need a two. So two times row two added to row three will make my new row three. So the work on that, two times row two would be zero, two, 10, 36. And then row three is gonna be that zero, negative two, negative 10, 20. So we're gonna get zero, 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 56. So if you look at what we have here, that was again row three, so zero and then 56. So then the other two rows, nothing changed on them. One, negative three, negative 17, negative 59, zero, one, five, and 18. And so right now you might be noticing something that our X, Y, and Z are all zero. We were not able to make that into a one. It's not gonna be possible. And so our system that we have, if we rewrite it, is x minus 3y minus 17z equals negative 59. We have uh, 1y plus 5z equals 18, and then we get 0 equals 56. Well, we already know that's not true, so there is no solution to that system. And so to interpret that system of equations, it means that they all don't intersect at one point. And so graphically, here's some pictures of what that situation could look like. So individually, there could be like two planes that do intersect. I mean, these guys intersect here at that line, but they don't intersect at the same time with that third plane. Or we could have all three being parallel, or you could have two that are identical on top of each other, but then only um, the other one is um, parallel to that. So it doesn't intersect all at the same time. So let's look at this next system, see what kind of weird thing happens here. So again, we can get some practice writing our augmented matrix back into its system of equations. Whoa. And we have x plus 3y minus z equals 7, and 3x plus 11y minus 5z equals 29. 
Okay, so let's see. The first thing that we'll want to do again is make sure we have a one in that upper corner. So I see a one already there. So if we just interchange rows, that would work. So I'm going to take row one and interchange it with row two. So that would become one, three, negative one, seven. And then we have negative four, negative 11, three, negative 24. And our last row stays the same. And so then it looks like um, we want, remember, once we get our one, to get zeros below. So um, just kind of following the preset matrix here, if you get a zero in the bottom, that means we need to make three go away. So if we multiply that first row that has the one in it by negative three, add that to row three, that would make that new row. So what that looks like, right, is gonna be negative three, oh, sorry, negative one, multiplied by three is negative three. Um, and then we have a negative nine, uh, positive three and negative 21. We're gonna add that to three, 11, negative five, 29. So we'll get a zero, a two, a negative two, and then a positive eight. So that's our new row three, zero, two, negative two, positive eight. Again, the other rows stay the same, 1, 3, negative 1, 7, negative 4, negative 11, 3, and negative 24. So then we want another 0 in that first column. So to make negative 4 go, we need positive 4. So we're going to multiply positive 4 times that first row, add that to row 2 to make my new row 2. So 4 times row 1 is going to be 4, 12, negative 4, and 28. Adding that to row 2 we look like we're gonna have zero, one, negative one, four. So row two is zero, one, negative one, four. The other rows will stay the same. One, three, negative one, seven, zero, two, negative two, eight. And so then the next thing we want to do, we have the one, zero, zero, that's awesome. And we have a one in that diagonal started. So we wanna turn that two into a zero. So again, we want two to go away. We need negative two. We'll multiply that by row two, add that to row three to make my new row three. So that will be a negative two times row two. So negative two, positive two, negative eight. Adding that to row three, that's two, negative two, eight. So we get zero, zero, zero. So row three is zero, zero, zero. And I missed the zeros at the beginning here. Let me just fix that. Okay, there we go. We got our four zeros. That's correct. So then our first row is one, three, negative one, seven. Our second row is one, negative one, four. So we can try and keep going here. Let's make this three into a zero. So that would mean we need a negative three. So negative three times row two added to row one to make my new row one. So that would be zero, negative three, three, negative 12, added to row one, one, three, negative one, seven. We get one, zero, two, negative five. So row one is one, zero, two, negative five. The second row we have one, negative one, four, and the bottom row, zero. So we're gonna kind of keep going a little bit more. Um, you could kind of notice already that we have that row of zero. So we know we're gonna have infinite solutions, but if we try and narrow down, um, what's that situation look like? Is it all one plane? Is it gonna be um, a line where they intersect at? So right now we already know that um, these two are the same plane because they were just multiples of each other, which you could see here. But let's see what's going on with um, the first row or the first plane. So if we want to try and make something else happen, um, we could try and make, I guess, the two turn into a zero because we can't make that one. So we have space for one more matrix. I'd say right now there's infinite solutions and we can figure out what they look like. Um, but let's see, if I make that two go away, it would need a negative two. So if I multiply row two by two and add that to row one to make my new row one, that would be adding zero, two, negative two, eight to row one, one, zero, two, negative five. So we're gonna get a one, two, zero, three. But then that's kind of messing up the zero that I had there. 
so I'm not going to be able to do any more with this without messing up my system. So let's actually go back to that system because I can't rewrite that any other way until I start changing and I'm not, um, I'm kind of undoing my hard work. So um, looking at that matrix, it would be X plus 2Z equals negative 5. And then we'll get Y minus Z equals 4. And then the last one, we just get 0 equals 0. So for this one, we have an infinite number of solutions. We can see that. And what we want to do is have some idea of what does that mean our ordered triples look like because we still have a whole bunch of ordered triples that's what we mean by infinite um, it's not that there's no solution there's an infinite number of them and so what that could look like i'm going to kind of skip ahead a little bit if you look at those two planes you have either two that are parallel and you can see their intersection is right here it's this line or they could all be all three of them separate but again all intersecting at that one line so you can see in this matrix, as soon as we make one row go away and the other rows are not, we know we have two separate planes going on here that will be intersecting at one line. And so I can write, if you look at my um, little system here, I can write actually in terms of Z. So I don't know what Z is. I can let Z be any real number. And then I can say, okay, then that means that, is there a way to write Y in terms of Z? So if I look at that second equation, if I add the z over, y is actually equal to 4 plus z. So I can rewrite this y value as 4 plus z. Similar for x, if I minus the 2z, I can write x is negative 5 minus 2z. So negative 5 minus 2z. And this is the ordered triplet that my solutions, my infinite solutions look like, where z is any real number. So if I, for example, let's say let z is... 2, then I could actually find one of the ordered pairs that make all three of those equations true. So to find that, I would take negative 5 minus 2 times the 2, 4 plus the 2, and then 2. So my ordered triple would be negative 9, 6, 2. So that's one of the solutions to the system which you could check. But again, z can actually be any real number, so there's going to be an infinite number of points here. And so again, we're saying to interpret the system, they intersect at a line. And that line in 3D can be represented as a bunch of these ordered triples. All right, we have one other situation that can happen with our system. And I'm gonna, this time they gave us the system, we wanna write the augmented matrix. And so the augmented matrix would be, again, written without any of the variables. So 2, negative 3, 5, 3, 4, negative 6, 10, 6, 20, negative 30, 50, 30. And so we want to use elementary row operations again um, to rewrite this. So the first thing that I um, notice is that, well, they actually are getting a 0 in that row. So they didn't go for the one first because normally you want to try and get a one in here. They're trying to get a zero. So let's see what happens with that. So to make 20 turn into a zero, we need a negative 20. So if we take the first row, which has a two in it, I could turn that into negative 20 by multiplying um, that first row by negative 10. We'll add that to row three to make that new row three. So that's negative 20, positive 30, negative 50, negative 30, we're adding to row 3, which was 20, negative 30, 50, 30. So we have for row 3, 0, 0, 0. We'll keep the other matrices or other rows the same. And so we have that. So then you notice that um, looking ahead, they put a 0 in there. So to make that 0, if you multiply, let's see, to make 4 go away, we need a negative 4. So negative 2 times row 1, adding that to row 2 can make my new row 2. So that would be negative 4, positive 6, negative 10, negative 6. If we add that to row 2, that's 4, negative 6, 10, 6. We're getting 0, 0, 0. So our second row has all these zeros, but so does our third row. So that means really that they're all the same plane. So that's our interpretation. You can look at the picture down below. They're all the same plane.
So I'm going to write down that system. It's 2x minus 3y plus 5z equals 3, and then we're getting 0 equals 0, 0 equals 0. So this system of three equations is really three planes that are the same. And so for our solution, I'm going to write this a little bit different. Well, z could be anything and y could be anything. So y and z are any real numbers. And so if I want to find x, I can rearrange that first equation. So that would be 2x equals 3, move the 3y over and the 5z over, and then write that over 2. So x is 3 plus 3y minus 5z over 2. So that's one way to write it. Another way that I like to write um, this system is to say that it's all the ordered pairs as long as they satisfy that first equation. 2x minus 3y plus 5z equals 3. And so we just have another dependent system. So these last two were dependent. Anytime we have infinite solutions, they're dependent. And the very first one, going back to that, that one had no solution. We call that one inconsistent.